was Dalton a middle class man born in the small district of Cook during the year of 1881, was the founder and first president of Turkey. One day in May, north of present day Greece, known then as Salonika, a child was born to Zabedi Ani in a pink multi story house on Islam Street. Nobody knew that this little baby would one day become a group leader. Mustafa was a man who believed in peace and fairness. After the devastating fall of the Ottoman Empire, one that ruled over most of Europe, Turkey was born. Other countries were also born out of the remains of the empire. Mustafa was born at this time. Though the last Ottoman Sultan had concluded that resisting the Allies' demands was a feat impossible, many Lus were still resisting in Anatolia. As a 13 year old, Mustafa attended Salonika Military Junior High School, later making the position of a military officer. Mathematics teacher at the school gave him the name of Kamal, meaning Kirk. Meanwhile, revolts broke out in areas, including military medical school and constant military. After blazing through high school and graduating college as a lieutenant, he entered the military academy in Istanbul to become a staff captain. This earned him a place in multiple armies before he jumped into the fray, World War I. In the year 1911, he was sent to oppose the Italians and fight in the Balkan Wars. He was finally recognized as a great military man in Dardanelles for beating off an Allied invasion. Who are the Allies? In the year 1892, an alliance was created by many countries, consisting of the United Kingdom, France, Belgium, and many others. These were the Allies. The conflict between them and their enemies began with Germany and the United States, the U.S. getting angry at Germany. Then side Russia, Serbia, and others sided with the Allies of Austria, Hungary, the Ottoman Empire, and Bulgaria sided with the Central so started the war. A treaty was sent in response to the devastation that the Allies blamed on Germany. The treaty was meant to punish Turkey and it did. This was the Treaty of Versailles. The treaty took away what little land Turkey had in its possession and gave it under control to other countries like Britain and France. The little that remained of this poor country was overrun with people from the Allied countries. Yet even the cruelty of the treaty couldn't face some of the original Turks and they began their rebellion to change the treaty in 1921. After the win Tripoli against the Italians, the First Balkan War began. Greece, Bulgaria, Serbia, and Montenegro opposed the Ottoman Empire, causing large losses for the Turks. Ataturk moved to Istanbul as the Greeks took over his birthplace, Salonika. The Ottoman Empire is struggling with the constant defeats of the Balkan League, but they would never give up what was most important to them, Adrianople. This was the center of their culture. As the forces beat at Adrianople without avail, the Ottoman government agreed to surrender the city. Yet the original Turks would never give up the city so dear to them. In the year 1913, a group of Turks overthrew the government. As the forces pounded at the walls of Adrianople, they staged a trick in the south, draw some soldiers away, and finally win the city. The trick worked, and the Balkan League claimed Adrianople for themselves. In the event of winning the Battle of Dardanelles and getting back two provinces, Mustafa made the status of commander and inspector. On May 16, 1919, Mustafa departed for the city of Samson. The day of May 19, in which he landed in Samson, is the point at when a national movement was made for the Turkish youth. That same year, he dropped his place in the army and brought up the position of chairman in two congresses. Even though in the middle of a war, Mustafa traveled to Ankara to create the first Turkish Grand National Assembly or Parliament. The Sultan of the Ottoman Empire, who was settled in the Istanbul government, was not pleased with the change, for their goals for Turkey were completely different from the parliaments. Later, the Grand National Assembly gave permission to Mustafa to take away the Sultanate, and the old Sultan left Turkey. By winning against the Greeks, the Turkish people finally got the peace settlement that was indicted upon them changed. The new treaty was named. The Treaty of Lausanne. This treaty gave back land to the Turkish people, allowing them the independence that they have so long fought for. This marked the end of the Turkish Revolution. On October 29th, Turkey was declared a republic, and Mustafa was unanimously elected. Ataturk spent the time before his death working on improving Turkey from its heart. He installed two societies, the Turkish Historical Society and the Turkish Linguistic Society. 
His interest in women's rights led him to create a reform on women's rights, granting them simple but important rights, like the right to vote on elections and be in office. The Grand National Assembly, near the end of his life, passed a law that awarded Mustafa with the surname Ataturk, meaning Father of Turkey. All the reverend years to come, Mustafa Kemal Ataturk took his last breath on November the 10th. It was a shock to everyone, and the people of Turkey and the world were devastated. A great leader had just passed away. The funeral was held in the city of Ankara, where representatives from the states came to grant Mustafa one last farewell. His remains were finally taken and buried in Anad Kibir, at a Turk's mausoleum. According to a decision by the United Nations, Mustafa is the only statesman in the world who was commemorated by the other leaders from other countries. Throughout the years, leaders from other countries have delivered speeches to give their respects to him. John F. Kennedy was one of them. On November 4th, 1963, at the 25th anniversary of the death of Mustafa Kemal Ataturk, he says, I am honored to join in commemorating the 25th anniversary of the death of Kemal Ataturk. The name of Ataturk brings to mind the historic accomplishments of one of the great men of this century his inspired leadership of the Turkish people, his perceptive understanding of the modern world, and his boldness as a military leader. It is to the credit of Ataturk and the Turkish people that a free Turkey grew out of a collapsing empire, and that the new Turkey has proudly proclaimed and maintained its independence ever since. Certainly there is no more successful example of national self-reliance than the birth of the Turkish Republic and the profound changes initiated since then by Turkey and Ataturk. Ataturk was deeply interested in the friendly relations that have traditionally existed between Turkey and the United States. He noted our democratic governments and once said prophetically, we are friends now and we will be much closer friends in the future. Our present close alliance can be traced to the firm base prepared by Ataturk for free government in an independent Turkey. I am proud that the United States can be a partner in this alliance linking us to the country of Ataturk and to the ideals which Ataturk helped establish in Turkey and the world. I salute this great man on the anniversary of his death. People still remember Ataturk to this day, whether they had been alive at his time or had stories of him passed down. In the event of his death, multiple memorials were raised to honor Mustafa. In Turkey, the Enkiluk Air Base invites Turkish and U.S. airmen to honor Ataturk at the Ataturk Memorial Day Ceremony. Commemorative ceremonies and programs are held throughout the country the dates of November 10th through 17th. Only a few number of great leaders in this world were able to achieve goals in the social, political, economic, legal, cultural, and educational areas in a short period of time. Those who lie in wait of recognition of those who have passed away with a call to the future of remembrance those were the people stood for what was right. Even though he didn't live on, his legacy shone at just as bright as he could have. He causes the people of the modern time to look back for a moment and celebrate what he was and is, a leader of our past, present, and future. <laughs>